Hi everyone and welcome to another video by BioTeach, this time focusing on one aspect of cell membrane transport known as co-transport. You may have already covered diffusion and osmosis in class, which are other types of transport across the membranes, but this one always seems to cause some confusion amongst students, particularly because you have to be quite specific in the exams when answering the questions about it. Specifically, you need to talk about the co-transport of glucose, but you may also need to consider amino acid transport too, because that's transported via co-transport as well. So co-transport only happens when glucose is in low concentration outside of the cell. Of course, when it is in high concentration outside of the cell, it can simply come into the cell via facilitated diffusion, as you can see on the diagram here. Facilitated diffusion occurs through these proteins through the membrane and glucose can fit into the proteins and then be released inside of the cell from the exterior to the interior. Glucose is obviously a valuable currency in our bodies because we can metabolize it to make ATP through the process of respiration. So we don't really want it to be wasted. Every last molecule of glucose has to be absorbed in. Hence, when it's in lower concentrations outside of the cell, we need to make sure that it comes in against its concentration gradient. And the membrane proteins that can make it happen are called co-transporters. So these are a type of carrier protein, which are able to bind two molecules at a time. There is a concentration gradient which is created of one of the molecules, and that concentration gradient is used to move the other molecule against its concentration gradient. It's a bit like a hitchhiking system. The one that's in the lower concentration outside of the cell, for example glucose, will hitchhike a ride with a molecule, usually an ion, into the cell. It's usually the sodium ion which allows the co-transport of glucose into the cell when it's in lower concentrations outside of the cell. The name co-transport is usually given to the process in which these two substances are simultaneously transported across the membrane by one protein carrier. And the co-transport of glucose takes place in the small intestine where absorption takes place. So the diagram here shows you the cell in the ileum. This is the purple border that you see. The top of that cell is the lumen of the small intestine where the food would be absorbed from. And the red at the bottom shows the blood capillaries that would feed into the ileum cells. The first step of co-transport is where the sodium ions are moved by active transport, obviously using ATP, from the epithelium cells of the small intestine, and they go into the blood. And this is labeled number one on the diagram. This pumping of the sodium ions lowers the sodium ion concentration in the epithelium cell, and that makes the sodium ion concentration in the lumen to be higher. Essentially, what we're saying is that there's enough sodium that's pumped out of the cell to ensure that the sodium concentration outside of that cell at the top is higher than inside of the cell. And that causes the sodium ions in the lumen to move down the concentration gradient into the epithelium cells from a high concentration to a low concentration. And as these sodium ions move down the concentration gradient, they move through the sodium glucose co-transporter proteins, and they basically will couple with the glucose molecules in the lumen and drag them into the epithelial cell. So this is the process number three that we're looking at on the diagram. This causes the concentration of glucose in the epithelium cell to be higher than the concentration of glucose in the blood. And so the glucose will now diffuse down the concentration gradient from the epithelium into the blood by facilitated diffusion. The box on the right with the red border shows you the verbal description of the process, which I think might help you answer the exam questions. I would take the opportunity to pause the video now to write down that description as it will be quite useful for your revision notes. As always, you know my videos contain the application of that knowledge, so I've got a few exam questions here that you can attempt. This first one is for three marks, and it says that the cells lining the ileum of mammals absorb glucose by co-transport, and that happens with sodium ions. You need to explain how this happens for three marks. Please pause the video now to give this question a go. Remember, it is only three marks, so you need to make three clear points. So, looking at the mark scheme, we know that the first mark will be awarded for saying that the sodium ions are actively transported from the ileum cell into the blood. 
The second marking point is to talk about how that maintains or forms a diffusion gradient to allow sodium to enter from the cells of the gut and carry with it the glucose. The third marking point is to specifically say that glucose will enter by facilitated diffusion with the sodium ions. The next question here shows you a diagram which shows you the absorption of amino acids into the blood by the cell lining. From the diagram, you can see that it's not too dissimilar from the diagram I showed you, but this time it's just talking about amino acids. The question itself says that they added a respiratory inhibitor and that stops the absorption of amino acids. And you need to use the diagram to explain why, and it's worth three marks. So have a look at the diagram, pause the video now, answer this question in your notes, and then I'll go through it with you. So we know that the respiratory inhibitor will be a chemical or a molecule which stops respiration. And we know that respiration generates ATP. We also know that the process of co-transport will use ATP to pump the sodium ions out of the cell in the ileum. If the sodium ions aren't pumped out, then we won't be able to transport the amino acids back in because there won't be a diffusion gradient created to allow that co-transport to take place. So if there's no respiration, you need to say that there's no ATP produced, or you could say that there's no active transport. That would mean that the sodium ions would not be moved out of the cell, and therefore there would be no diffusion gradient for the sodium ions to move back into the cell to carry the amino acids with it. Hopefully that makes sense. The final question I have is a five marker, so an extended response question, which asks you to explain how the transport of sodium ions is involved in the absorption of glucose by epithelial cells. Please pause the video now to give this question a go. Remember, it's an extended response, so you do need to write a fair bit for this. So if we look at the mark scheme, we simply need to describe the process of co-transport. So we would start off with the fact that sodium ions will leave the epithelial cell and enter the blood. And you have to say for a second marking point that them leaving is by active transport. You can say that they're pumped out or you can say that they use ATP and are actively transported out of the cell to go into the blood. The third marking point would, would go towards you saying that the sodium concentration or the sodium ion concentration in the cell is lower than in the lumen of the gut, which then creates a diffusion gradient for sodium ions to move from the lumen into the cell. And the sodium ions will enter by facilitated diffusion. Saying diffusion alone is not enough unless you say that it would move from a high concentration to a low concentration, I would really get into the habit of saying it's facilitated diffusion. You then also say that glucose is absorbed with the sodium ions against their concentration or against the diffusion gradient. And that's what the description of co-transport is. Okay, so I hope that was useful for you all. If you've got any comments or questions, please leave me a message underneath this video. Thank you so much for watching my videos and make sure you're subscribed to get more content like this. Thank you for watching. Bye for now.